Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. Trials weapons are here. These drop at various wins during the card. This one dropped after the third win in week one. It should rotate back here in a couple weeks. They brought back old favorites. So today, let's talk about the Trials of Osiris 150 RPM Kinetic Scout Rifle, the Scholar. And this, in my opinion, is one of the best 150 pure dueling scouts in Destiny 2. In this review, I'll go over why. It has to be set up different ways, and what makes it duel so well is the perks and the perk combinations. Six out of the ten perks that it can roll are the first time we've ever seen them on a 150 RPM scout, and some of those perks really elevate this scout. This is more of a direct PvP review. It doesn't have many, if any, PvE applications, and I'll talk about them briefly as I go if they come up. When looking at this scout class, there are two big standouts, the Jade Rabbit for Kinetic, Polaris Lance for Energy, both are exotic, both have Zen Moment. Now two of the best legendary options for the Energy is the Prey Tech Scout and Transfiguration. Kinetic, we have Talons of the Eagle, it's good, but Scholar is here as a real option now. Most of the 150s are duds, even when they came out, Frontier Justice, The Dream, Guiding Light, the newer ones with random rolls, Does Not Compute, Imperative, they miss the mark for PvP, they have their own issues. There are things on the Scholar no others have, there are perk combinations that make it elite. I use a variety of weapons, some of you might not find any value in a 150 Scout. I happen to like them, Scholar has some things about it with its perks that really distances itself from other legendaries to make it a real competitor. It has the intrinsic high impact frame, it's more accurate when stationary and aiming down sights. The sight is a red dot ORS, the same from Destiny 1. 150 RPM, the damage profile is similar to 150 hand cannon, so both do 68 to the head, that's for a 0.8 time to kill. Body shot damage for the scout is 38, but the hand cannon, like spare rations, is 43. The 38 body damage makes the body shot TTK for Scholar at flat 2 seconds, you need 6 body shots, it takes a long time, so you need to land your crits. Its perk set is designed to duel well and designed to be at a distance, long lanes, midtown, rusted lands, widow's court, convergence, eternity, Voss talk, altar of flame, and some others. I would be very careful on javelin, wormhaven, anomaly, your closer ranged maps. If you are, be sure you're in the longer lanes. For its base stats, all are in the middle of the pack. The downside of any high impact is going to be the stability and handling. It has a stability of 29 and a handling of 37. The stability and handling on a high impact scout are like weights at your feet, they really weigh you down. It has a recoil direction of 80, an aim assist stat of 32, it has a high range stat. Now for the recoil direction, the base recoil tends to go a little bit right. I don't think it's bad once in a gunfight, but it can be cleaned up if you want it. If on mouse and keyboard it's less severe, you should be okay with this base recoil, but you can tighten it up if you would like. So with the counterbalance mod, it makes it a little bit more vertical, but it's going to trail a little bit to the left. With Arrowhead, it's pretty much completely vertical. You don't need a counterbalance mod at that point, so you should invest in a targeting adjuster, radar booster, radar tuner. With Chambered Compensator, it's going to trail to the left a little bit from base, not too bad. Chambered plus a counterbalance mod will make it pretty much vertical. Extended makes you have negative 10 handling, so I wouldn't go for that. It already has a super low handling stat. So as far as feel, I don't mind its base recoil direction. You can add on a counterbalance mod or recoil direction altering perk if it bothers you. Arrowhead should make you good out of the gate. For the magazine, two standouts are going to be ricochet rounds and high caliber rounds. Another go-to option is light mag for plus 5 handling and plus 10 to reload. Any other mag perk, a pitted mag, if you get double mag perks, just make it work the best that you can. For the perks, each node has 5 perks apiece, 10 total perks. In node 1, we have underdog. This is the first time we've seen it on a 150 scout. This weapon grants a boost to reload speed as your health gets lower. So this is going to be on the bottom of the list because you can kind of simulate that with gauntlets. You can put on reloader gauntlets. Where Underdog can shine is when it's paired with a damage dealing perk, and the scout doesn't have any. And the idea behind that is you would be in a duel, you get the kill, you're low health, you can get a fast reload, and then have that damage dealing perk to start seeking, not here. With other perks in this node, this has little use overall. Opening shot, very good. Improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of attack. Increased accuracy is the main draw here. Easy first headshot, or when you go for a cleanup. Full auto, this is to the player. I personally find other perks in this node more beneficial, but if you enjoy it, go for it. This way you can just hold down the trigger. Then we get into slideways. Sliding partially reloads this weapon's magazine and temporarily boosts handling and stability. So, first time we've seen it on a 150. It's a top tier option, and this is where the perks can really start making weapons, and it can make this scout. The two downsides of a 150 are in this perk, handling and stability. Remember that these are the hardest hitting, slowest firing scouts of the game. They're most effective at a distance. So you challenge long lanes, you hold long lanes. One of the best things about this perk on Scholar are maps like Widow's Court. Any long lane, you can knee slide around a corner, get the buff of increased stability, and it's gonna aim down sights a little bit quicker because you're sliding and it's boosting your handling. You can then challenge the lanes. This scout feels like a Jade Rabbit that's getting stacks as in moment, very stable. And since it's so stable, that means you're going to receive flinch well, keep your shot on target. 
So challenging snipers is a very tough thing in Destiny 2, but if they body me, they don't flinch me so hard that my shot's way off of them. And also when you slide, it loads in two rounds of ammo directly into the mag. With a controller, it's a massive difference. It feels great, you feel very confident in those lanes, the shots are very crisp. With mouse and keyboard, I'm still learning M and K. The difference is small, but it's still there. And we're gonna talk more on this perk later. Lastly, we have quick draw. First time seeing it on a 150, top tier perk for it. It ups the handling stat. So you can bring out the scout quicker, but it also affects your aim down sight speed. It's about half as fast as snapshot, and that's huge on these because their handling and just all around clunkiness is low. We've talked about this before in a couple videos. So putting quick draw on a 150 is huge. In the second perk node, we have no distractions. It's top tier for it. Again, long range scout, aiming this weapon for a short period of time reduces flinch. You aim down sights, it takes about a second and a half to two seconds, then the perk will appear on the screen. As long as you're scoped in, you're gonna have the perk active. Remember, it has to have that delay, so you can't just aim down sights, shoot shots, and expect no distractions to kick in. It has to have the delay. So with holding down lanes, this is top tier for it. Without the perk, flinch versus various weapons is really felt, so pulses, ARs, hand cannons. You see what the reticle's doing in the background. I've gone over unflinching before, how it works, no distractions is kinda like that, and unflinching mods can be stacked on top of no distractions. So you can put on enhanced scout unflinching with no distractions, and it feels great. When no distractions is on your screen, it isn't as severe. In game, I can feel it working. I can shoot through the flinch, I can land precise shots against some of the most flinch inducing weapons in the game hitting me. I have three shot cold heart users using no distractions. You know how hard Ace of Spade flinches you, it does well versus Ace of Spades. ARs flinch you, I have three shot of spinning up Suros. And you can see the perk working, so taking fire at a distance while having no distractions really helps you out and if you get in a pinch at short to mid range it does well there too. Next perk, Vorpal Weapon. Decent, it allows you to four shot a super with four criticals. I wouldn't settle on this one personally though. Others do it better, such as Breach Light, and with the Scholar's Distance, it's zoom. Most of the time people pop supers right around you. Good luck hitting four crits on an Arc Strider, Spectral Blades, any roaming super that's coming straight for you. PvE wise, you can take shots at majors from a distance, but a rapid hit Vorpal Patron does the job way better. Moving on to Elemental Capacitor, increased stats based on the currently equipped subclass. So Solar is increased reload speed, Arc is increased handling, Void increased stability. You would be using it on a Void subclass, and hopefully they buff Solar and Arc, what they do, because you can put on mods for those. You can't put on mods for stability. They might as well give Enhanced Reloader and Enhanced Dexterity. They might as well just buff them all the way up. It's rumored for stability that it grants plus 20, some say plus 25, plus 30, so the stability boost given is really felt. It's almost doubling your stability. Massive for controller users and can even be felt with mouse and keyboard. Feels very clean on a void subclass and you have this perk active, so I rank it high. As far as using solar or arc, we can go back to the first opening clip. Knee sliding and slideways giving me that great stability boost. Well, after that, since I'm on a solar subclass, I'm using elemental capacitor, it grants better reload. So when that sideways timer is over, look at what the regular recoil is doing once that comes back into play. If I was on stability, it would be nowhere near that bad. And again, even with MK, the stability given from Void can be felt. We have Snapshot, never a bad perk, but on the other side, Quickjaw helps enough. I would rank Snapshot in the bottom half. If you love Snapshot, and don't get me wrong, getting a high impact scout to feel snappy is never a bad thing, go for it. But I value other perk combos that I'll get into in a moment. Lastly, Celerity, new perk, gain the following effects when you're the last living member on your fire team. Increased target acquisition, increased handling and reload speed, reduced flinch from incoming fire. Now, unfortunately, I got seven or eight scouts, none with this perk. I've heard good things though. I would imagine that on a hand cannon or a pulse, it would be better. I can't talk intelligently about it until I get one. And when I do get a weapon with it, I'll break it down for that review and then we'll go from there. So if you have one and you find a lot of value, go for it. This is a wild card to me personally, so I'm sorry about that. It's important to know what you're doing with the perks. That dictates how much use you're gonna get out of it using perks to their top potential. For the perk combinations, why Scholar is such a great dueling scout, and that's what it's good for, a pure duel. And since Celerity is unknown, I have three top roles for it, three roles that start with a perk from the first node. I have one of them, that slideways with elemental capacitor on a void subclass, works well for MK and controller. The whole idea is challenging lanes, knee slide, getting that stability boost, no other legendary 150 can do it like this. It does it so well, and this is a role I plan to use on longer range maps like Widow's Court for trials if my exotic is used elsewhere. To challenge sniper lanes and have near pinpoint shots, an elemental capacitor and void helps it in its own right but you're combining them. It puts you in a very good position in a duel, it's great. 
The second top roll for sideways is going to be paired with no distractions, and this is the best of both worlds. This actually might be the top overall roll for me. Same thing, long lane map. While you're holding lane, you get the benefits of no distractions. That perk can help you out tremendously in a duel. Now, on the other hand, you can be aggressive and challenge lanes, knee sliding around them, getting on those buffs to stability and handling granted by slideways. So you can have a scout that can hold lanes, be defensive or offensive. The second top tier perk combo is for quick draw. You would pair it with no distractions, possibly elemental capacitor on a void subclass. There's also celerity. Quick draw is just huge for it, helping the ADS and overall handling because when you're somewhere where you really shouldn't be with this scout, like right here in this clip, I go in with a fusion rifle, I'm in the middle of nowhere with a long range weapon. Quick draw allows me to bring it out, just avoiding the inherent clunkiness of a 150 and being able to return fire. So quick draw alone is just really good for a 150. Now the third overall combo is with opening shot. Same thing, opening shot with no distractions, elemental capacitor and avoid, and this time snapshot. Opening shot snapshot is great on anything. I believe though, since this is a long range, lane holding, lane challenging type weapon, perks like sideways, no distractions, stability perks, like elemental capacitor for void, and quick draw really stand out. Cause this scout is designed for challenging. Getting the stability really high or the handling really high is what's setting it apart. Perks and perk combinations are set up to help you get a three shot easier. No other scout to me feels like this other than exotics, and for me it's outperformed the majority if not all of the other legendary scout options in the high impact class. It's a very special one. Overall, statting into stability with perks like Ricochet or Stability Masterwork is recommended for a controller. M and K, you can actually do that as well, but you can also look into handling if you don't have quick draw. Just stat it out the best that you can. I was getting gameplay, you saw this used on some short range maps, and if you want to use it on them, go right ahead, but I kind of advise against it. I would bring this out on big maps, that's where it shines, that's where it's designed to be. It's excellent at dueling at longer ranges. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Ring the bell to get videos right when I post them. High impact scouts aren't for everyone, and a lot of people have their minds set on them. If you do get one with slideways or anything that we talked about, give it a try. It's a different feeling 150. I would like to know what you think about it. Let's talk about it down in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I'm Cool Guy.